The sounds you just heard came from an analog synthesizer, which uses circuits not unlike the ones we've been using in class, but a little bit more complex, to generate electronic sounds which can be played through a speaker. Now, one of the reasons why I purchased this analog synthesizer is because it has an oscilloscope to let you see what is happening uh, when you play a note. And in the video clips, you'll see that oscilloscope change with different types of sounds, different pitches, different volume levels. And that's what we're going to explore in this video. For this first set of clips, we're going to analyze volume. Specifically, I want you to look at the waveform as it's silent and then hear it and determine whether or not you could detect something that could tell you how loud it was going to be compared to some other clip. What could give away how loud it would be before you even heard the sound? So in those clips, I hope you notice that when the peaks and the valleys of the audio uh, waveform were higher, that the audio signal was much louder. In mathematics, we call this the amplitude of the wave. And the higher the peaks, that means that the speaker is moving out and back further, the louder the signal is. In the next set of videos, we're gonna analyze pitch. In other words, what can we tell visually? How could we predict whether a sound is going to be low or whether it's going to be high? And that's about as high as I can go, sorry. So again, it's gonna be silent at first and see if you can predict, is this gonna be low sounding or high sounding? What I hope you noticed is that a frequency that is lower has a longer time before that wave repeats itself. In fact, the, the wavelength is longer. In mathematics, we call this the period of the function. How long does it take to cycle again? And the longer it takes, the lower the frequency, and if it takes only a short amount of time to repeat, the frequency is higher. In the third set of videos, we're gonna analyze the tone or the timbre of the sound. Does it sound smooth and sort of easy to the ears or is it much more aggressive and distorted sounding? What is it that generates those different kinds of sounds?
So what I hope you notice is that the waveforms that looked smoother sounded softer and they had more of a smooth soft tone to them and the ones that had more aggressive ends sounded more distorted and maybe punchier and uh, uh, more aggressive. Um, and the waveforms that we're going to be studying are those smoother ones. Sine waves and cosine waves are as smooth as they get. Uh, but I wanted to, us to be able to analyze and look at the fact that there is more to the story when it comes to sound. And that those smooth waveforms, while easy to graph and do mathematics on, aren't actually that interesting to listen to. But the same principles that apply to those smooth waveforms actually apply to the more aggressive and in more interesting ones as well. Please join me in Teams on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Uh, to go over how to actually graph these trigonometric functions. And we'll be specifically focusing on how amplitude and the period, or the wavelength, affects the graph. I'll see you then.